Hi guys and welcome back to the Lemme Rich Techies. Today we're going to show you how to configure LACP on Juniper devices. Okay, so today we're going to continue where we left off in our previous video with regards to aggregated Ethernet interfaces and we're going to configure LACP this time. So you'll see that we have customer site on the left and data center on the right. These two sites are connected via XE001 and XE002 and these interfaces are part of an AE0 bundle. Let's have a look at the config here. So we first log on to our customer site switch. So we do a show pipe display set pipe no more. And here you can see that we have XE001 as part of AE0 and XE002 is also part of AE0. And then we have a VLAN configured on this AE VLAN 50 and we are doing VLAN tagging. So that's the only difference between this lab and the previous aggregated ethernet lab. I just wanted to add a VLAN tag because I needed to showcase exactly how the LACP packets traverse the network. So now we'll have a look at the data center config, show pipe display set, and we'll have uh, more or less the same config here. So you'll see we have XE001 and XE002, part of AE0. We also have VLAN tagging enabled on this interface, and it's just a routable interface with an IP of 10.10.10.2 on this side and 10.10.10.1 on this side. So there's a common misconception in networking that you need LACP for aggregated Ethernet to work, and that is simply not true. LACP is just link aggregation control protocol, and it is exactly that. It's a control protocol. It is not needed for aggregated Ethernet to work. We'll demonstrate that. So we do a rancher interface AE0, and you can see that AE0 is up with a speed of 20 gigabits per second, and that makes sense because we have two 10 gig interfaces in AE0, and we can confirm the same on this side. So rancher interface AE0, and you can see here that it's also 20 gig and it makes sense once again because we've got two 10 gig interfaces in AE0. We also demonstrated earlier the redundancy portion as well as the load balancing over AE. We're not going to cover this in this video, but we will just show you how to configure LACP and exactly how it works. So let's go to the customer site switch. What you first want to do is you go into top edit interfaces AE0. You can just do a show here. So there's uh, only aggregated ether options configured there with a minimum link statement of one. That just means that one link needs to be active for this AE to be up. So now we're just going to enable LACP. So this is under aggregated ether options. You can specify LACP and you can type in question mark and then you are provided with a few options. The only mandatory configuration that you need to do is to specify whether it's active or passive. Now active means that this interface on this switch will send the hello packets for the LACP. And if you specify passive on the remote side, it will only respond to the LACP packet and not send its own. Both members can be active, but both members can't be passive. So usually you would make your core switch active and all your access switches, you make them passive. But just for this lab, we're going to have two core switches as seen here. We've got a customer side switch and a data center side switch. This is not a leaf and spine deployment and there's no access switches in this scenario. So this is only two switches and we'll just make one side active and the other side passive and we'll see exactly how the LACP behaves. All right, so we're still on customer side switch, so we just make it active. And as you can see, this is the only config that you need for LACP, the minimum config to bring LACP up. So the next statement that you need to take note of is periodic and this is a timer. By default, Juniper is periodic fast, which means a LACP packet is sent every second. So if you don't specify the period or the periodic statement, then the Juniper defaults to periodic fast, as just mentioned. But what will actually happen is if the remote side has periodic slow configured, for instance, the one where the statement is not present will auto negotiate and adjust its timer to match that of the neighbor. We'll demonstrate that as well. Okay, but for now, we're just going to leave the config as is. So it's gonna to go top and commit. And then we can do a run show LACP interfaces. And this is pretty much what you would see. So the MUX state detached means that the interface is not active. And the reason for that is because the remote side still doesn't have LACP enabled. 
So let's do that. So we're going to do exactly the same on this side. So top edit interfaces AE0, third aggregated ether options, LACP, and we're going to make this one passive. Now let's do a show and we can now just do a commit. All right, so let's get back to customer site and we rerun this command. So it's now collecting and distributing. And you can see that it auto negotiated or defaulted to fast periodic on the timers. And here you can see more info regarding the local interface and the remote interface. So this is the local interface and this is the remote interface. It'll tell you what its timeout values are and whether it's set as active or passive. So here we can see that on the local side, we've configured it to be active and on the remote side, we've configured it to be passive. So let's have a look if we leave this one as is. So if we go into edit interfaces AE0, so you can see we don't have a periodic statement here. And what happens if we change the periodic statement on this side? So edit interfaces AE0. So we say set aggregated ether options LACP and we're going to make it periodic slow. So before we do a commit, let's just rerun this command, run show LACP interfaces and you can see that both are fast periodic. So if we go back to the data center switch and we do a commit here, the remote side or the customer site should change to slow periodic. And there you go. So this is actually a very nice feature. If you are unsure about your remote ends period, then you can just not configure it on your switch and it should auto negotiate the periodic from the remote end. So just to confirm that our AE interface is still up, so we just do a run show interfaces AE0 and you can see that it's still set as 20 gigabits per second and we can do the same here, run show interfaces AE0 and it is still as 20 gigabits per second. All right, so where does LACP then actually help? Now, if we have a look at our lab here, because these are virtual devices, if I disable an interface on this switch, it's not gonna go down on the remote end because these interfaces are always up. Now, in a real world environment, if these are directly connected and you disable the interface, the remote end will obviously go down. So our lab is actually a very good platform to show you how LACP works. Usually LACP is used when there is a transparent layer two device between your two switches or your layer two servers is running across a VPLS, eVPN or layer two circuit and you have no control over what happens in the middle. And if a link in the middle goes down, it's not necessarily to say that one of the remote end links will go down as well. For instance, if you plug into a transparent layer two device, if this interface goes down on this side, the interface on this side will most likely still stay up. That means that your AE will stay up if you don't have LACP configured, which means that any traffic running over this link will be black holed. There is also another advantage of running LACP and that is link protection. So if somebody has to unplug your link and plug it into a different switch to snoop your traffic, then that interface will not come up and your traffic will be protected over the existing LACP link. We will also demonstrate that just a little bit later. I just want to show you the LACP failure mechanisms as it is currently in the lab. Okay, so to do that, I'm actually going to delete all my LACP config here. We can just do a show, we can do a commit, and I'm going to do the same on this side. So edit interfaces. AE0 and delete aggregated LACP. All right, so I want to show you what happens if a link goes down with no LACP. So we can just do a run show interfaces AE0 and you can see that it's still set as 20 gigabits per second. Run show LACP interfaces, there won't be any there. And we do the same on this side, run show interfaces AE0 can see that it is a 20 gigabits per second link still and run show LACP interfaces and there's nothing there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to disable XE002 on the data center side and you will see that XE002 on the customer side is not going to go down. So that's set interfaces XE002 disable. We can do a commit. And if we do run show interfaces AE0, you can see that on this side, the link did degrade to 10 gigabits per second. 
But if we have a look on this side, run show interfaces AE0, it is still as a 20 gigabits per second link. So this means that from this switch's perspective, the AE is fully up with 20 gigabits per second, and it's going to send traffic via both these interfaces. Obviously the interface on this remote end is down, so all traffic traversing this specific link will be black holed. So now let's see what happens when we enable LACP on this link and we disable the same interface on the data center switch. So we go to the data center switch and we can just do our rollback one, show pipe compare. And you can see with it, we're just re-enabling this interface. Just to confirm that everything is now working, we do a run chain interface as AE0 again. And you can see that the speed is 20 gigabits per second. And if we do the same here, AE0. So the speed is 20 gigabits per second. So let's uh, set up LACP again. So we can just do set interfaces A0, aggregated ether options, LACP. We're gonna do this one active. All right, and we can commit this config and then we can do the same on this side. So set interfaces A0, aggregated ether options, LACP, passive. And we can just do a commit on the side as well. So let's run run show LACP interfaces. All right, so LACP is up on the data center side and we do a run show LACP interfaces here. And it's up on the side as well. So we do another run show interfaces AE0 and it's 20 gigabits per second and run show interfaces AE0 should be 20 gigabits per second here as well. Now, if we disable that same interface, set interfaces XE002 disable, we can do a commit. Now, if we do a run show interfaces AE0, it's gonna be 10 gigabits per second on this side, and now it should be 10 gigabits per second on this side as well. All right, and that's how we can see that our LACP is working. Even though the interface on this customer site switch is still up, we do a run show interfaces test. LACP would have prevented traffic from flowing over the link that's down on the remote side. We can verify that by doing a Wireshark capture. So we are capturing traffic on interface XE002, and you can see that there's no traffic running over this link except for the LACP keep lives. No ping traffic whatsoever, no network traffic. And then if we have a look at our other link. So this is on XE001 and here you can see that our ICMP requests and replies are going over this single link. I'm just going to stop it here because there is another thing that I want to show you here. So if you have a look at our ping traffic, you'll see that it's got a VLAN ID of 50. Now the reason for that is we've got VLAN 50 enabled on the AE interface between the two switches. So VLAN 50 configured on both sides. That is why this traffic is being tagged with VLAN 50. But you will see that the LACP traffic has got no VLAN tags. That is because LACP traffic runs native outside of a VLAN. And it makes sense due to where you configure the LACP. So if we just have to go into edit interfaces AE0 again, and you do a show, LACP is configured under the AE0 interface, not under the unit number. So Therefore, LACP traffic does not care about VLANs, it runs natively over the link. Right, so we're just going to restore our config here. So let's just do a run chain interface A0 again. So still at 10 gigabits per second, and the side should still be 10 gigabits per second as well. So we are just going to re-enable the interface. We can do that by rollback one, show part compare, and just want to restore everything back to 20 gigabits per second. So if we do a run show interfaces, let's give it a second. There we go. So it's now 20 gigabits per second. And on this side, it should be 20 gigabits per second as well. And there we go. Right now, we're just going to have another look at our Wireshark capture here. So we'll first have a look at traffic on XE001. So we just uh, capture XE001. So XE001 has got the ICMP ping requests. You can see that there's no replies on this link and it also has the LACP packets. So let's have a look at uh, XE002. This is XE001. And here you can see that all ICMP echo replies are being sent over XE002. 
So that means that our AE interface is fully operational again. Apart from only protecting your links from link failures when AE and LACP is configured, it can also protect your device against prying eyes. So say for instance, all three of these links were part of the same AE, we're going to configure that. So for this one, we are just going to say set interfaces XE003, uh, ether options 802.3 ad and we're going to make this one part of ae0 as well so just do a show pipe compare and we're going to commit so just having a look at our ae config again we still have lacp configured here and then if we do a run show interfaces test we should see that xe003 is also part of ae0 so then what happens if somebody plugs in a malicious device into one of your existing ae links well, you can check that by doing run show LACP interfaces, LACP interfaces, and you can see that XE003 is detached, meaning it's not processing any traffic. Right, so the reason for that is the remote side or the remote snooping switch doesn't have LACP enabled on this interface, so we're just going to enable it there as well, and we'll see what happens once we do that. All right, so here we are on the snooping switch. So we're just going to do a show pipe display set. So you can see that interface XE000 is in AE0. We have VLAN tagging enabled on this AE0 as well. Same VLAN as on the customer side in the data center, VLAN 50. And then we have LACP configured on this as well. So if we do a run show LACP interfaces on this switch, you will see that it does say that it is attached. So we do a run show interfaces AE0, you can see that it is actually down. So even though it does show attached here, if we go have a look at the customer site switch, we do a show interfaces AE0, you can see that it still shows only 20 gigabits per second. And if we do a show LACP interfaces, this new link XE003 is detached. Right, so that is where our snooping switch is connecting to, XE003. And you can see that LACP actually disables this link on the customer site switch. So this then means that LACP is actually protecting your link from prying eyes. So anybody connecting a rogue switch to your existing infrastructure, even though the config on these two are the same, LACP will not bring up this link and instead all traffic will still go over these two links. All right, and that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope to see you guys in the next one.